Greetings, this is August 29th at 8 a.m. and uh, we are looking at an overview from the east wall of the chasm. Let's take a look at the Google Earth KML for the VIIRS data and we are seeing new hotspots around Hyheum and there may be one in there by Hutchinson. I am seeing a new spot of approximately two and a half kilometers west of Vidette. Zooming into the area south of Hyheum, we can see a lot of that activity in those forested groups about three kilometers south of the lake. We are seeing uh, more activity east of Old Scotty Creek Road and around the Brusso Lake and Barricade Creek areas. Let's jump over to the NRC data for this morning and see what activities happened in the last six hours. I'm seeing very controlled infrared in the region south of Hyheum. Let's jump over to the 12 hour map and add that data. We can see a lot of new activity happened over the last 12 hours last night. And if we jump over to the 24 hour map, it does fill it out. Here we can see the concentrations in the center where a lot of that volatility is. Uh, again, both sides of Old Scotty Creek Road and if we look at the terrain it gives you an indication of uh, how close it is to some of those really one in the just lower right hand portion it looks like it's right on the edge of the ridge there if we pull back and take a look we can still see that activity around the Battle Creek Clemmis Lake area at the lower portion of your screen Let's move up and take a look at that spot close to Vedette. Uh, it's approximately two and a half kilometers west. Uh, there has been activity there in the past. This is uh, some new indication and we'll keep a watch on that for any growth and hopefully that just turns into a yellow 24 hour spot and fades away. This is Young Lake from yesterday, approximately 5 p.m. And if you look north of Young Lake and to the left of your screen, a lot of activity. Here is today. Is that a beautiful sight? A lot less activity around the north of Young Lake. A lot less activity to the west of Young Lake. Um, it's definitely cleared up. No new hot spots there. So that's very good indication from this infrared system. We are moving further westward and we are looking at the area around Hutchinson Lake in the lower left hand portion of your screen. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of about three or four 12 hour, one six hour spot there. And looking at the northeast slope of Mount Jim, north of Pressy Lake, I'm seeing one 12 hour spot there and no new six hour spot. So that activity has slowed down a bit north of Pressy Lake. I'm going to take a look at the infrared displaying for a few other areas. This is Kelowna and no new activity uh, in the last 12 hours, it looks contained within the same specific area in the fill pot FSR that it was over the last couple days. So that's very good news for Kelowna. I am looking south of Manning Park, south of Cathedral Lakes. This is a very intense area. This forest fire has been going on for a couple weeks in Washington State. And you can see a lot of new red activity. That's within the last six hours and they look very controlled. So there must be, uh, I'm going to make an assumption, a lot of controlled patterning going on there right now. This also has the potential to send a lot of smoke and haze up into the Okanagan. And it's something we have to watch for. It's very close to the border and I'm sure we're sharing resources uh, with uh, the fine folks in Washington. Let's move up north to the Caribou on the Fraser Plateau. Uh, we're seeing a lot of 12 hour activity around Clean and Clean and I am seeing a lot of 12 hour activity that happened yesterday in the Hansville Risky Creek fire and in the Nazco fire. There are some new red six hour hotspots in there. Um, it, it looks thinner 
uh, not as intense as it did in the past. However, we are seeing a lot of new activity. West of Risky Creek and west of Hansville is looking very good. No infrared is showing up there around Anaheim Lake. Uh, Nazco looks reasonably clear in the immediate area around the town. I am seeing a lot of that new infrared to the north and west of Nazco. So these are areas to watch. And I'd also like to draw your attention to the lower mainland. And we can see a lot of 12-hour infrared there. Uh, Langley, Harrison, out by Richmond, uh, Burns Bog. And we can also see some... Uh, south in Washington around Ferndale. So there are infrared hotspots that periodically pop up and these are dealt with by wildfire crews and regional fire departments. We've moved over to Windy now and we're looking at three kilometers coming from the southeast close to the Big Bar Cam and uh, we are waiting for that 3 o'clock breeze. Uh, I'm seeing 15, 16 kilometers an hour with gusting potentially up to 30, 35 kilometers an hour. So this is being debated by the different computer models. Uh, one sees more intensity in the wind, the other sees less. So it that tells me there's going to be variation depending on whether you're on a plateau, on a ridge line, in gullies or valleys. There could be a lot of variation, but primarily coming from the south and uh, building up speed towards that 3 o'clock peak of the day. Let's take a quick look at the EO browser. And of course, the links for all these uh, resources are in the description below. That cloud of smoke we're seeing in the center of your screen is over top of Hyheum. And we are seeing some haze north of the Bonaparte towards uh, Young Lake. But again, Young Lake is very clear compared to what it was yesterday. That is good news. Zooming into High Heum, uh, this isn't really telling us much other than there is smoke in the area and some haze drifting to the north. If we look at the area south of Green Lake, you can see a bit of the burn pattern in there. I'm also seeing some forestation within and there may be some haze perceptible there. I'm not seeing any open uh, plumes of smoke. We've moved over to the NASA world view on the uh, 28th, and this is from yesterday showing the haze around Hyheum spreading northwards to Loon Lake and uh, flowing not really with any great velocity. It's just kind of hanging around over High Heum and Loon Lake. Let's go to the Big Bar Cam at uh, the Big Bar Rest Area, uh, featured by Drive BC. This is sunrise, and uh, we are seeing some of that brown haze northwards towards the chasm. If we go over to the Sheridan Cam pointing westwards towards 93 Mile and Lone Butte. Again, I can see that particulate fog in the background, but it does look like a pleasant day and a nice sunrise. We're jumping over to the Begby Cam and also a very pleasant sunrise. Yes, I am seeing a bit of that brown haze towards 100 Mile House on the right hand portion of your screen. That's looking northwards. Uh, however, it could be a pleasant day, and with those breezes coming in at 3 o'clock, it might blow a lot of the smoke out of the area. So that's really what we're watching for, is the activity south of High Heum, uh, and this breeze that's supposed to come in about 3 o'clock uh, should build around lunch hour. I'll keep a watch on that. Uh, it's hard to judge exactly how much wind will come. It could dissipate before then. So please do keep a watch uh, on all the alerts and bulletins in the regional links below. And I'd also like to express thank you to all the wildfire crews that have done such an amazing job uh, suppressing this over the last few days. And thank you very much to all the firefighters that have come out from the United States, Australia, New Zealand, Mexico. Um, I know I'm forgetting to mention more. 
uh, and to all the viewers that have been following along, thank you very much, and please, everyone, be safe.